Hey, welcome back to the channel. I am really glad you're here because today I'm going to talk to you about our new Kawasaki Mule Pro MX EPS side-by-side. -side. Now there are a lot of side-by-sides out there to choose from, so I thought today I would just do a little bit of a walk around and show you some of the features of this particular model and why I chose it. When shopping for a side-by-side, -side, you really need to think about what your individual needs are. And I had to weigh all those things when I was looking at the different models that were out there. I knew I didn't want anything really too big, so I wanted something under the 1000cc size. So I looked at the Polaris Ranger 570, I looked at the Kubota Sidekick, uh, which is 850cc, and then this one, which is kind of right in between, it's 700cc. Of course, engine size is only part of the equation. Now, Kawasaki promotes this as a true mid-size machine, and it really is. It's not too big, it's not too small. It's kind of the Goldilocks model for me and my family. And you can get it in five different models, and I may not get all these options right, but I can go through the models with you. Of course, there's the base model, which is the MX, and that one does not include power steering. Then you move up to the EPS model, which stands for electric power steering, and worth every extra penny in my situation. They also make a camo edition, which has the nice camo design on the body. Then you can move up from there to the SE model, the special edition, and that one I believe includes a roof. It's got uh, different pinstriping on it and it comes with alloy wheels. And then there's another model, which is the LE, the limited edition model, which has nice silver coloring. That one comes with everything that the SE comes with, but it also has a winch already attached. Of course, these half doors are included, which is really nice. They're solid, solid plastic, they're lightweight but they do keep all the mud and the muck off of you. A lot of other models just have uh, like a, a mesh, which is pretty much useless. Uh, I guess it's made to just kind of hold you in if you're moving around a lot, but these doors are pretty nice. I like them a lot. One problem though, is that they are plastic and these color inserts on the side are just decals. Now this unit is only about two weeks old and you can see here that it's already starting to peel. And that is a common issue with a lot of people Unfortunately, it's not something that Kawasaki has addressed since these units came out, I think in 2019, but I can tell this is gonna peel off and I'll probably just end up peeling it off myself. One of the things I really liked about the style of this particular model is this bed and the back end here. It just kind of reminds me of those old J10 Jeep pickup trucks. One thing that some of the other side-by-sides have going for them is they have come up with a single latch pickup truck style tailgate where the mule still uses this dual latch system. And I have to say, I didn't like that too much, although I had to think about what I really needed. And it turns out it's not really a problem. Uh, even if your hands are full, you can still unlatch it with one hand. You just do one side and then the other. So it's not so bad, but it just seems a little outdated to have these type latches on here when so many other ones have gone to the single lever latch but it's a pretty significant little tailgate. It's not bad. Whoa, I didn't latch it down. It's a pretty significant little tailgate though. It's strong and you can sit on it. So obviously the mule has a dump bed on it and it has a similar latch type system where you have to unlatch one side, then walk around and unlatch the other side. I know a lot of UTVs have a single lever latch, which is nice, but I don't plan on dumping this bed very often, so I don't mind the fact that I have to latch it. It also keeps the bed locked down nice and sturdy, so there's not any rattling involved. There's a hydraulic assist cylinder, so it's pretty easy to tilt the bed back. And as far as I know, Kawasaki makes it a, a optional dump bed cylinder, which is electronically operated. Um, and I know you can get one aftermarket as well. So if you do plan on dumping a lot, you can get that uh, electronic dump feature. The bottom of the bed is nice, solid diamond plate steel, and I added this optional rubber floor mat, which is nice because it fits in there perfectly and it keeps things from sliding around in the back. The other thing they have are these slots where you can take a two by four or a two by six and you can divide your bed up. And I do that because I can put some five gallon buckets up here and they don't roll around or slide around. You keep shovels in the back and this can go in any one of these spots. You can also place them in the other direction if you want to divide up your bed in different ways. So pretty well thought out. While we have the bed tilted back, let's talk about that motor. So again, that is a 700cc single cylinder fuel injected engine. From what I understand, these machines are made by Kimco for Kawasaki. So that may not actually be a Kawasaki engine, 
but I figure if it's good enough for Kawasaki, it should be good enough for me. You can see the heavy-duty drivetrain back there, the universal joints, and I have to say this thing really is built solid. The unit comes with a standard two-inch receiver on the back, and I added this interesting hitch that has a two-inch ball, but also has a plate where I can pull around my garden cart. The tail lights and brake lights are LED, and they're just pretty cool. There's a decent amount of ground clearance and a good amount of travel with this suspension, and you can see that these shocks are adjustable with a spanner wrench, although I find that the factory setting seems just fine for me. The steel wheels are pretty plain and pretty basic, but I kind of like that look. The Mule Pro MX comes with this nice tube bumper, and it also has a mounting plate for a winch already attached. Now those two lights that you see on either side, those do not come with it. In fact, they're not even made for it. I custom fabricated some brackets and installed those myself. Every model except for the base model comes with a dual set of headlights. The outer headlights are halogen and the inner headlights are LED. And both of them have high and low beam settings. Kind of a funky thing, I know. I mean, most people say, why did they include halogen and LED? Why not go all one way or all the other? Kind of weird, maybe kind of cool. Now inside the cab, it's really comfortable. I like the bench seat a lot. It's made for two people, but at least it is a bench seat. So you could squeeze a third person in the middle there if you really wanted to. The shift lever is just a simple up and down action. Works pretty smooth. I do find that reverse kind of clunks into gear. So you have to feather the gas just a little bit. And I have heard that's pretty common with all these machines, but it goes into gear really easily. I like that you can leave it in gear and turn it off. And in order to start it in gear, you just have to hold the brake. It's got a series of switches across the dash, which include the differential lock, which is really nice to have. Some units have a solid axle in the back, and when you turn sharp, they tear up the grass, where this one has a locking or unlocking differential. So you leave that basically unlocked when you're maneuvering in tight quarters. But if you need that extra traction, you can lock the rear differential. Then, of course, the two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive is a simple switch really just an electronic engagement of that. That works great. Then you've got your two light switches there. The halogens are this first switch, low beam and high beam, and then your LED low beam and high beam as well. Just below the factory switches, there are four knockouts for additional switches. Now I added these two. This one's not hooked up to anything yet. This one I added some emergency flashers to the front and to the back. The basic instrument cluster is nice. I like that it has a clock built in. It shows you when you're Four-wheel drive is engaged. It shows you when your differential lock is engaged. It shows you the miles, the hours. It has a trip odometer, a gas gauge, and a speedometer. I will say that the storage space in this unit is adequate, but I think they could have done a better job. You've got small spaces on each side of the dash. You've got a few spaces under the dash, but I think they could have made them a little bit wider. You know, you really can't put a pair of pliers or tools in these spaces. and seems like there's extra space they could have utilized to make these a little bit bigger. There's a cup holder on each side, and here's some of that storage area. You can see they're pretty small. Like I keep a razor knife right there. This one is a small space, really not much bigger than a business card, but deeper, obviously. And then you've got a space here for some things, and same thing on the other side. You've got a space here, a cup holder, and another space there. But again, it seems like they could have utilized this space to make this a little bit longer. Then you could throw a hammer or a pair of pliers in there. But as it is now, there's really no place for that kind of stuff. You have to throw it in the back or on the floor or on the seat. The glove compartment is nice. It's locking, which is handy. It's pretty deep, and it holds just enough that you can put a few things in there. There's a single 12 volt accessory port, no USB jacks, but you can put an adapter in there. And of course there's room next to it if you wanted to add a second one. There's also a space here that's made for a factory radio that you can add if you want to. I've heard several comments about the parking brake, which is kind of like old school Toyota or Datsun or Nissan, where you just pull it out to engage the brake, turn it and release it. I like it a lot. Nonetheless, there is storage all over this thing. And Pardon the dog print, she loves it up here. There's a single latch for the seat. It tilts forward. And there's a small bin right here where you could put a toe strap or something like that. It's not weatherproof or waterproof, but it is at least a small storage area. And then on each side of the seat, there are some openings, but they're really not made for storage. I suppose you could throw a, a box or a bag or something in there, 
But uh, again, more storage space that I think they could have utilized. Also under the driver's seat is easy access to the battery and you check the oil right there. There's also a little bit of under the hood storage, which is nice. You can just open the hood up, it slides off. Then you've got a little bin here and I keep my toe straps in there. So I do appreciate that. And then you have easy access to the radiator and the uh, fill bottle for your antifreeze. There's a tilt steering wheel on a gas assisted shock. It really feels nice. If you're a bigger person, you can get in and out without any problem at all. And it's basically infinitely adjustable. Really nice. Now here's one thing I'm not real fond of, and I know beggars can't be choosers. I said I wanted a mid-sized machine and that's what I got. So I would like to have another couple of inches of leg room or foot room in here. The other thing is there's this foot rest on the left-hand side here. And to me, it's a little bit too steep of an angle. I don't know that it needs to be there at all. I think I'd almost rather have the uh, foot room there instead of this, but that's just a minor thing. The gas tank is located here on the driver's side and that sucker holds over nine oh. gallons of gas. Pretty nice. One of the first things that a lot of people like to do when they get a new side-by-side -side or UTV is upgrade the wheels and tires, but that was another reason I went for the mule because I think that the stock tires are really perfect. They're a nice size, they're aggressive, but they're also not too hard on turf. I think they're just great. So for me, there's no reason to change them. Now this thing is a little short and stubby. One thing I would like would be a little bit longer bed. The bed on this is wider than it is long. So I'd like to have a square box at minimum, but it works for us. And the short length also gives it a relatively good turning radius. It's still not super tight, but obviously it's better than if it was a longer machine. There are a couple factory options that were a must have for me. One was the roof. The other is the factory poly windshield. And this windshield is about a quarter inch thick. It's really nice. It's got vents in the front. It's super solid and it's just great. So I think a windshield and a top are the bare minimum. Now there are some aftermarket things that I added like these strobes in the front. Again, that was a custom fabricated job and I put too much time and too much work and too much money into it, but I had fun with it. So you can customize these things however you want and doesn't always have to be a factory options. I added a couple other things too. If you're interested in any of these accessories, I'll put links in the description. Most of them are Amazon affiliate links, so they do help out the channel with a small commission without costing you any more. So these tool clamps are made by a company called Coal Pin, and they're great for carrying shovels and different type things. Just lock them down like that on each side and keeps it out of your way. And you just squeeze to release. Very handy. Now, I already mentioned this interesting hitch that I got. It's specifically made for UTVs or ATVs because it's not made for real heavy duty use, but it's great because it has that two inch ball on top. And I think you can get one with a one and seven eighths ball as well. But this one has the two inch ball on top. It's got that tongue on the back so you can hook a lawn cart or something else. Then it has that rod between the two where you can wrap a strap around that for towing as well. And I did put lights in the rear as well. And these are adjustable strobe lights. I installed a little switch under the dash and there are 26 patterns of flashing that you can cycle through. So I don't plan on changing it too much, but it's pretty handy if you're parked alongside of the road or doing some work where there might be some traffic. The passenger has a nice grab bar welded right to the ROP system here, but the driver's side has nothing. I guess they figure the driver has the steering wheel to hold on to, but I often like to drive with my right hand and hold on to the grab bar with my left hand. So I added these flexible grab handles that just Velcro basically to the top of the roll bar system. I have two, one on each side, and I use these a lot. Another thing I added is this rear view mirror. It's not a factory rear view mirror, it's an aftermarket, but Kawasaki makes a nice one too. So if you're not gonna add side mirrors, you'll wanna at least add a rear view mirror. The other thing that was important to me was to have a machine that was quiet. And this machine is by no means quiet, but I know that it's quieter than some of the other ones. Now going down the road, you can cruise at a speed up to, they say 45 miles an hour. It does have a limiter. So at 45, it starts to kind of buck. Uh, and it's really, I guess it's an electronic limiter. So I cruise down the road sometimes at 40, 41 miles an hour, and that seems plenty fast to me. You do get an awful lot of noise going on the road, mostly from the transmission or the transaxle. There's a real high whining sound. So the engine isn't so loud, it's that transmission that's louder.
Now this does have four wheel disc brakes. They're not power brakes, but they're hydraulic. When it was brand new, I would give the brakes probably a five out of 10. Now that it broke in some and I have almost 100 miles on it, I'd give the brakes a seven out of 10. Because again, they're not power brakes, but they do work. You just have to really pound on them. Another thing I really like about this mule is the engine braking. It has terrific engine braking. Now, the brakes are not fantastic, but the engine braking kind of makes up for that. When you're going down the road or through a trail, just by letting off the gas, the machine slows down considerably all by itself. So it's really got great engine braking. I hear that some of the other ones don't have that, so that's a plus. Let's talk about capability a little bit. This is, of course, a four-wheel drive unit. There are some lower price models that are not but four-wheel drive was a must for me. There is a lot of steel in this machine. I don't plan on doing any rock crawling, but you've got these steel, I guess they'd be Nerf bars, but you know, if you rub up against something, you basically are protecting your body with these heavy steel bars. And the floor is also solid diamond plate, which is welded to these. So you've got a really strong structure down there. Well, I hope you found this little introduction to the Kawasaki Mule Pro MX EPS helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you've not yet followed me on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram and even TikTok, I invite you to join along. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.